I needed a pastor to say, this isn't right. Right. This is immoral. The buck stops here. Yeah. You need to apologize to your body parts for putting them through stuff. Like, I apologize to my breasts. I apologize to my, I'm sorry, I'm going to just keep this real. I apologize to my female parts. I, 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 I ask my body for forgiveness, for exploiting itself, for allowing it to be pimped out and violated and raped. This is down to the bone too, right there. There's a scar from my ex-pimp locking me in the bathroom. There is no eight-year-old in the history of eight-year-olds that has ever said, I want to be a stripper. I needed someone to tell me they love me and that they had a safe place for me to go. I had nowhere to go. Nobody came and rescued me from the Christian community. Nobody. Nobody. Where were they, Timmy? I never would have stayed that long. Yeah. Why didn't they come get me? Please don't push me. Please don't push me, but y'all push B. Now we got dwellers from Cali to Flatbush B. Now they got heat on their feet that say press B. And now we so deep in the streets, y'all can't stress me. Can't curse me, then bless me. I'm crucifying my flesh, that's less me. SAT from preaching, can't test me. Atheists are now believing, that bless me. Yeah, we got the basement replacing any of those worldly pursuits that y'all change. Any of those trials and tests that y'all facing Any of the relationships that y'all changing We rearranging, making the shame shift Giving Satan back what's his, that's the blame shift Rise up and walk commands, that's the lame shift Cheat codes for living this life, that's the game shift All on Yeshua man, the rest is manure man I'm dying daily so I rise up a purer man Press and be daily so my sins looking fewer man Washing the blood so my sins down the Superman, yeah, so press B with me, and let's let whatever gon' be just be, uh, yeah, so press B with me, and let's let whatever gon' be just be. Welcome to the basement, ladies and gentlemen. I am your host, Tim Ross. I love you guys so much. No matter what you're doing today, I am so grateful that you have pressed B. Shout out to all of my dwellers from all around the world, wherever you are watching or listening from. I am so grateful that you've made it back down to the basement. I also want to shout out everyone that has literally pressed B by downloading the B-Side app. Thank you so much for taking this safe space and making it a safe place where you can go to the deep end, keep the lights on, or be in the basement and whoever else we're gonna have. Uh, I'm so grateful for the conversations. Um, so excited for um, the community that is forming. And I'm just so proud of everyone that is embracing vulnerability as their superpower. With all that said, I'm so excited about um, my guest. This is my homie, all right? So I met this young lady uh, was it like 15 years ago, 15 or 16 years ago? Yeah. We were at a conference in Florida, mm -hmm. and there's just certain people that you meet that you just know like, oh, you know what? If we lived in the same hood, we would we would be over each other's house all the time. Mm -hmm. Like there's, there's certain Sometimes you go into a green room, you meet people, and you're like, okay, bye. bye. <laughs> you know what I mean? And then sometimes you meet some people, and you're like, oh, that's going to be my homie for life. This was one of those people. And um, we we got to connect a few times. But then as life goes, we all had different assignments and stuff that we had to do. But we have been reunited and it feels so good. So I'm, I'm like, <laughs> so I'm so happy uh, that she is here. She has an incredible testimony i don't even know where to start on the testimony i mean we could go um ex call girl we could go top escort uh we a whole bunch of stuff i'm gonna let you give us the 411 on that yeah. she's been married for 15 years mm -hmm. to ozzy fox yes my love the love of your life my first man i've ever married the first man legally. you ever legally. <laughs> the first man you have legally ever married yeah. um and um such an incredible story and um, a, a survivor story, mm -hmm. a victorious story. Mm -hmm. 
Ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, I want to present to some, introduce to others, my homie sitting on the couch with me in the basement. Annie Lobert is in the Hello. building, ladies and gentlemen. Let's go. Come on. Yeah. Where are we going? Right here. We just I thought there was a portal somewhere. I could <laughs> jump into a portal somewhere and we going far away. Like, just... like it's Super Mario Brothers? Yeah, man. No, I'm I'm going to some another galaxy right now. It could We're be. We're getting out of this hood for a minute and going somewhere out. It, we could have been. No, it will be. Trust it me. Will. Yeah, we will. You want to come with? Yeah, let's, let's go. go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. I okay, love jump. you. I, I love you. You too. I'm so grateful that you're here. All I got to do is get in the telephone booth and press go. Is that Matrix? That's a Matrix reference. Well, that's kind of like from a, a throwback because I'm a sci-fi girl. A throwback to uh, Doctor Who. Oh, I remember Doctor, Doctor Who. I remember Doctor Who. The original Doctor yeah, Who yeah. that was kind of nerdy with yeah, curly hair. Yeah, for sure. That dude. Doctor Not very who. attractive, but his mind was. Too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. His mind was very attractive. Yeah. Early on um, in my, because I, I did freestyle battle raps and stuff for years and years. One of my monikers was Doctor Who. No way. Yeah, it was. So you're you're, you're the closet nerd with I am. Doctor Who? Oh, yeah, for sure. Oh, well, I wasn't even closeted. Like, I, I let people know. Like, yeah, that was a reference because my rap name was Anonymous Who, mm -hmm. a.k.a. Doctor Who. No way. Yeah, that's what it was. Okay, did I pick up that prophetically? You might have. Something, because yeah. I was seeing a booth right when you said, oh, we're, I mean, I said, let's go to another galaxy, and then I saw that booth. That you, telephone booth. You know, that, that's what it was. That's where Superman got his new outfit put that's on. That's right. That's and where, that's where Doctor Who. That's where Trinity portal. jumped in. Jumped in the Matrix. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I forgot about that. Why that's is, what I'm saying. Whoa. There's Ma a theme. We going need on. to bring back telephone booths. There's a theme going on here. We need some more telephone booths. Communication through the wire. Mm. Through the wire. That's Kanye's For remix. chance to be yeah. with you, I gladly risk it all. Right down, down to, to the fire. fire. Even through the... Oops. Boom, 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 I'm sorry. I love sorry. you some Chaka Khan. Yeah, Chaka Khan. Chaka Khan, Chaka uh, Khan, Chaka Khan. Yeah, I remember that. I feel for you. I, I think, think I love you. you. Hey. Oh, that was a jam I right there. I feel for you. That was, oh, that was Shaka's. I think I love yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, that was Glory Days right there. I think Prince wrote that song. Probably did. Speaking of that, yeah. they were good friends. Really? Chaka Khan and him, yes. She would come to Minneapolis, and so did Janet Jackson, and Jimmy Jam and Terry Lewis lived there, so they produced her album. I'm from Minneapolis originally, just as cut to the chase. Where all that crazy George Floyd, unfortunately, things happened. Yep. That was my hood. Wow. I rode my bike. Born and raised there? In Minnesota, yeah, yeah, Minneapolis. Wow, Minnesota. I love all my people. But you don't have a pop. Where's the pop? But pop. The, the, the Minnesota? Ba, 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 ba. Well, when I get around my people, I will. It comes See, back? If my mom wasn't in heaven right now with Jesus, yep. she was the biggest one. She okay. would say, Annie, Annie, are you ready? We're going to have supper now. <laughs> Here it goes. Okay. Yep. Oh, did you really do that? I'm like, Mom, don't start talking like that. Yeah. Because all of a sudden, I'm going to be OA Minnesota girl. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I'm from Minnesota. <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> and uh, if you want, I'll write it down on the post-it note. Yep. <laughs> now you can hear my accent. Yeah. I have to be around Minnesota people to bring it back out. But I it's got the you. core language yep. hardwired into yep. my brain. Of course it is. Wherever Absolutely. you're born, you can never forget your origin or your accent. And I was born at General Hospital, downtown mm. Minneapolis. Wow. Two blocks away from the job that I got the first week I moved to Minneapolis from Wisconsin. Interesting. So I love Minneapolis. Still do. Yeah. I think it's a great city. I'm sad that things have changed dramatically for a death of somebody. Yeah, for sure. And I totally sympathize with, you know, both sides, actually. That mm -hmm. cop was jacked up. Oh, for sure. Jacked up. Uh, and that whole thing that went down was just not right yep. and i it just made me sad to see everybody riot and burn and that target yeah that target got that was my first target really that was the first one open in the, in the wow. country wow because wow. uh, target's a dayton hudson property oh i did so know that's that. uh, a very famous bougie shopping place yeah. downtown Tar minneapolis well it, it dayton hudson so whoever owns that mm -hmm. anyway i'm a target girl regardless i love it yeah target is Target Archer Farms has some really good trail mix. Oh, I didn't know they had one here. Yeah. How far is that away? Oh, the Target is in. There's, we got a Target out here. Like, 
of course. Target's yeah. like the like a bougie Walmart in a way. It is. Right? It is. In fact, it's Walmart a, copied Target. Did they really? Was no, Target I mean, out before Mar- Walmart? I don't know. I know the first Walmart was in Arkansas, if yeah, I'm not mistaken. Of course, yeah. But who was going there? Oh, you want to look it up, aren't you? Of course I am. Oh, I'm, I can't. here we go. I can't. We going down the trail. Yeah, I got to know. I, I have to know stuff like this. Um, Was Target first or Walmart? It's <laughs> probably going to say Walmart. Target was founded before Walmart. Bing, bing, oh, bing, bing, wow, bing, wow, bing, wow, bing, wow, bing, wow. bing, 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 bing. I was bing. right. I'm today years old. Oh my gosh! All right. And they just go mess with us, aren't they? <gasps> oh my good. Okay, Did this you find is crazy. Else? Okay, oh. I'm gonna read it. All right. Target was founded before Walmart. Here's a brief overview of their history. This is crazy. Okay, the first Target store was opened on May 1st, mm-hmm. 1962, in mm-hmm. Roseville, Minnesota. Yes, that's true. The concept was developed by Dayton Company, now yes. now Target Corporation, as a discount version of their department stores. Mm-hmm. Walmart was founded by Sam Walton and yes. opened his first store on July 2nd, 1962. Wow. Wait Two months a and a day later. That's, Two months and a, a day bit, um, in Rogers, Arkansas. And there's in 1962, who would have known? Well, they might have had to write a letter to each other, that's it, or make a phone call. Yeah, that, hey, there's no way. This big, massive store that gets massive discounts at large bulk prices. So This is unbelievable. Hey, that's the first store that I got busted by the police. Do tell. Well, I was eight years old. My, <laughs> I shouldn't probably tell this story. I did not. I did not oh think you were going to give gosh. me single di- single digits on well, this. Eight. Eight. My best friend and I, my brother and his best friend. They were like doing this new thing, and I know this is terrible, but they were stealing to see what they could get away with. Yeah. Five dollar radios, stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Our allowance was a dollar a week. Okay. So, I saved up. Two dollars mm-hmm. to go shopping. Mm-hmm. <laughs> what does two dollars buy you nowadays? Oh, nothing. But in '62, but back you then been there was balling. There was a twelve pack of Barbie doll shoes. Now I'm a girl that loves her shoes. Yeah. Now if I got me a Barbie, she gonna have some shoes. Right, right, right. So <laughs> I saw the Barbie shoes in the aisle, and I had two dollars, Tim, and it was two dollars plus tax. Mm. And I didn't have. Well, it's actually, I think it was two dollars and five cents or something like that. I only had two bucks. So I decided to take the dare of my brother's best friend. I bet you could never steal. You're too, you're such a goody two shoes. Mm. You go to church and I'm like, wanna bet? So yes, I took the shoes out of the package. Mm, that's gangster. You gangster. I, right in the aisle. And you, I oh. shoved them in. I'll never forget the pants I had on that day. I had on cut off corduroy brown shorts. Uh-huh. And I had on this this white and blue top it was checkered with little strawberries all over it uh-huh. didn't even match yeah my hair was very long back then young little girl and i shoved it in my pocket and i was like i got away with it and my friend michelle oops beep <laughs> we were walking no one knows who that is anyway <laughs> we were walking out together like thinking we just because she ripped something off too yeah and i walked out and i'm in the parking lot getting ready to walk home because i lived Four blocks from Minnehaha, five blocks from Minnehaha Avenue, yeah, uh, close to Lake Street. So I'm almost at the edge of the parking lot. Excuse me, excuse me, young lady, excuse me, young lady. I'm hearing this voice and I'm just walking fast. I turn around and I swear, Timmy, I swear to Jesus, he looked like Jesus. He had hair down to his butt, glasses like John Lennon, okay, and he had a badge. He pulled it out on me and said. You're going to come with me. Wow. My heart sunk. Wow. Wow. First time trying to steal and got busted. Got busted. And it wasn't even that I didn't have all the money because I almost did. Yeah. It was a dare. I was going to get a $5 bill for a dare. Yep. And I wanted that $5 so bad because I thought I could buy like three outfits for my Barbie dolls. Yep. And a gangster amount of shoes. Yeah. (laughs) So... (laughs) (laughs) Hey, I didn't have nice clothes growing up, so I wanted my dolls to at least look presentable. I feel you. Presentable. Yeah. And so he brought me into the office. Uh, my heart's racing. My mom, I know she would forgive me, but my daddy, no, 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 no. They, I could have lied to them. I had no idea on me. Yeah. yeah. I told my real name and my address. Yeah. How stupid was that? Well, you're eight. You're and not then, a you're not a hardened criminal. Oh, OMG, my dad <laughs> got the call. Oh. 
Ooh. Can I talk to Mr. Lobear? Chat. Target's on the phone for you. I run upstairs in my bedroom to hide under my bed. I could do that back then because I was little. Yeah. Next thing I know is, Annie. He comes storming and uh, he said, sit down. I'm just gulping nut. I'm just trying not to puke because yeah. I'm so flipping scared. I'm thinking he's going to whoop me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My dad had a long belt. Yeah. Have you ever heard that album by Bill Cosby? Of course I to have. To my brother? Yes, sir. Yeah. Uh, to to, to, to my brother thing. with love. Yes. Yeah. So. Or, yeah, to my brother whom I slept with. Who I slept with. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Russell. Yeah, Russell. Right, Russell. To my brother Russell who I slept with. And yes. that was one of my favorite albums. I'd yeah, play it my, over and over. Me too. I know it by heart. Same with Delirious with Eddie Murphy. Yep. So. He said, uh, I'm not going to whip you today, but what I am going to do is ground you. Mm. A whole month, you can't leave the house. Mm. 30 days mm. in June. Mm. Summer vacation. Ouch. Now, in Minnesota, summer vacation in Minneapolis, it's a party. Yeah, absolutely. You're eight years old and you got your bike. Yeah. You can go anywhere in the city. Yeah, you can go anywhere in the world. You can leave your doors <laughs> unlocked back then. <laughs> right, for sure. I mean, Timmy, we had every race living in our little area. Of southern Minneapolis. Yeah. We had white people, black people, Indian, indigenous, uh, Chinese, Korean. We had, um, what else? Hispanic. Yeah, of course. So every, it's kind of evenly proportioned. Yeah. So I thought the whole world was like this. Yeah. Like if I went to Wisconsin, I didn't see any black people. Mm. I was like, where's the black people? Yeah. Where? What's going on here? Yeah. I didn't see any indigenous Indians, like the Lakota. Yeah. Uh, the Sioux. Yeah. A lot in Minneapolis. Yeah. And this is before, I think, before the population of the uh, Sumi, mm -hmm. the Sunni, mm -hmm. got really big. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm probably not saying the right Somali, Somali, Somali. population okay. got really big. Okay, okay. Uh, and so, to be grounded during the summer was the most devastating. Oh, I can't even could imagine. And he gave it to my brother because my brother ripped uh, Snyder's off that day. By the way, <laughs> Snyder Drugstore. Is the same exact auto zone the entire country and world saw get burnt to the ground wow. during the George Floyd riots in Minneapolis. Wow. That used to be Snyder's drugstore. Wow. So when I saw that burn, I was like a little upset because I was like, that's my store I bought my first little transistor radio in and where I get all my candy. And so, yeah, I have a lot of memories. For sure. And that part was pretty devastating because not only was I chained to our house. Even though my dad was at work, he walked four blocks to work, three blocks to work, right down the street at S. Leeson's. Mm -hmm. uh, he was the, I love warehouses, by the way, the smell of a big, giant warehouse. Mm -hmm. My dad was the manager captain or whatever mm -hmm. you want to call it. And um, that was a, that was really hard. And I started reading books back then. Mm -hmm. That's what made me, I think, start a passion for reading, mm -hmm. crocheting, mm -hmm. and painting. Well, what do warehouses smell like? Like what when you say the the smell of a big warehouse, what it was it? It kinda that? smells like tires. Okay. Mixed with like oil, like sometimes exhaust a little bit. Because my dad ran a bunch of forklifts. Yeah, 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 for sure. So that's my first smell. And like when you walked into a, a warehouse, like an old warehouse, you could hear the swamp coolers, you could feel the cold air hit you. It's just a neat experience as a little girl. Yeah, for sure. My dad used to bring us over there during midnight emergencies they would have. He'd have to come investigate if something broke down or if someone broke in the warehouse, which was very rare because crime was really down low back back then in Minneapolis. Yeah, for sure. Barely, to me, what I understood was there barely any crime. I, I love the way you talk because you talk in these very picturesque terms. Like I'm like I'm watching everything. I hope so. that, yeah, I'm watching everything you're talking well, about right do now. Do you know? Do you have you ever done this? Because I don't know where did you grow up at. I grew up in Cali. Okay, Inglewood. So when you go, that's right. You told me that. Yeah. When you go to your old neighborhood and you walk into a building that used to be occupied by you visiting it after school, or an old school building, which yeah. by the way, my old schools, both schools are still there, Longfellow and Hans Christian Andersen. Yeah. And Hans Christian Andersen was considered any inner city school. So in my classroom, like I said, we had every race, every color represented, yeah. right? It was yeah. really cool. Yeah. So being in that place of smelling and touching and feeling those places can trigger memories. It's very true. Which, by the way, in a bad way, can cause someone to get a major disassociation to start happening mm -hmm. with their memories because they've seen things or felt things or been places where... One cl one clip of a switch of a light 
or the smell of perfume or a breeze will hit them or a song will yeah. take them back way back yeah, and all yeah, of a sudden yeah. they're back yeah. at that place yeah. where that evil thing happened yeah. or that really good thing happened yeah, and then sure. there's this grief m sorrow of oh i wish i could go back there right now yeah for sure taste that popcorn yeah or i could taste that crepe or i could have that watermelon dripping down my face yeah yeah for sure you know or corn on the cob with a lot of butter yeah yeah, yeah for sure that's interesting so. Yeah, I'm not really talk, telling you guys who I am, but I kind of am in that No, respect. it's it's just, I'm just appreciating um, your choice of words <laughs> and, and how you color with simple. your words. Yeah. I'm a simple person. Yeah. I don't use fancy words to describe what I believe and think and feel. Yeah. And, you know, intricately, my heart is very complicated, but it's very simple at the same time. Yeah. I think, honestly, the only people that can unlock our heart is the Trinity. Mm. And I've not seen another human being do it fully mm -hmm. in the full capacity that they could probably could mm -hmm. if they had a gift to unlock me. Mm -hmm. So challenge, challenge. <laughs> it's not my challenge. Challenge. I'm not going up against the Trinity. Yeah, you can't. Yeah. Because they have threefold cord and you can't bust that. That's, thing. that's right. strong. Yeah, for sure. Know? Absolutely. But yeah, I was raised in a, a Christian I guess on the outward appearance, it was a Lutheran Christian home. Mm -hmm. You're using air quotes for all of our listeners. Anytime somebody uses air quotes, I have to point it out because Whoa. we don't use air quotes with, if we're talking about something legitimate. Oh. Well. So for you to say that, let me The Lutheran know. is my first introdu introduction to Jesus. Yeah. And it was a little bit off kilter. Got you. Yeah. I'm just being honest. Yeah. It, it, there was something about it that felt not real. Yeah. And I think it's because of the pastor. Mm. I was falling asleep in church all the time. Mm. I'm just like nodding out, like heads falling down. Here comes the the change. Remember they used to pass around the yeah yeah offering plate. Pass it around. Yeah, pass, yeah. had yeah. a velvet bottom. Yeah, it sure did. Handles. Absolutely. So Here that the, so that the change wouldn't slide yeah, or clink. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. And Let, so my mom had a little soft landing for that quarter and that dime. <laughs> my mom taught me how to tithe. I mean, yeah. she she would pull out my allowance and say, do you want to get, yes, mom, give it to the church. Yeah. So even though I didn't get paid for other things that I did for my father later in my life, like chucking wood and stacking wood in Wisconsin, to me that allowance was very important because it made me feel that I had a choice. Mm. And when you're being trafficked, you don't have a choice. Mm -hmm. So, but the, here's, the, here's the bottom line. Growing up in Minneapolis, there's great memories but I have bad ones too. Yeah. Like even even like missing the air hitting my face with the humidity cuz Minnesota is a land of 10,000 lakes. I don't know if you knew yeah. that or not. Yeah, but it's, for sure. it's a lot of humidity up there. And mosquitoes. Oh, oh my I can't gosh. even imagine. Oh, I, I can't, can't even imagine. I can still hear them in my ear at night. Mm, it's the worst sound. I'm like stop. Yeah. So for me like if I go back there, I get like this mel melancholy feeling mm. and sadness and grief because I missed out on a lot of my childhood mm. and my teen years and in my 20s because I, I went buck wild. Tim, yeah. went buck wild. Why would a girl like me, a Midwest girl from Minnesota, go buck wild? Yeah. Trauma. Yeah. A lot of people don't know exactly what trauma I'm talking about, but let me just break it down for you. I had from the very first memory, my first memory is living in this house over over by the Riverview Theater in Minneapolis. And I think I was about two, mm -hmm. maybe two years old, maybe three. And we had a black Labrador. I loved him. His name was Smokey. He's my buddy. And I remember my dad my mom went to work at night at some place. I don't know where it was. My dad was working during the day. They both had jobs. Back then, that was new, by the way. In the 70s, and like, because I was born in 67. Yeah. That wasn't really heard of a dual household working, but we did because my dad had an addiction towards antiques. Gotcha. And he would spend his mm. paycheck down. Mm. Then they got credit cards. Mm. What a nightmare. Mm. Okay. Mm. And he'd buy antiques reproduction antiques from wards, from
from Sears Roebuck and Co. Wow, wow, wow. And I just remember back then just being really afraid of my father. My mom went to work one night, and my dad had the task of making us kids a dinner. So guess what he made? He made pea stew with hamburger and onions. And it was disgusting. It's Ew. Sound, it doesn't sound attractive at he all. He put me in my high chair. I still had a high chair back then. And I remember him saying to me, you're going to eat this. It was this big plate to me. How could a two or three-year-old eat that? No way. I'm just sitting there. I took the first bite. I almost gagged. Couldn't stand peas. Oof. I love them now. Yeah, but yeah. couldn't stand them. <laughs> right, right, and right. And I'm sitting there, and he goes, you're going to eat this. And you're going to sit here until you're done. Guess what happened to me? I fell asleep head first into the stew. Mm. Laid there. Don't even realize I'm sleeping. Mm. He kept waking me up. Wake up. Wake up. And I'm like shaking and I'm crying. And he left me in there till my mom got home. She was so mad at him. And she got in trouble for that, for getting mad at him. That would have been hours, Danny. Oh, it was about five hours of sitting in a high chair. Oh, my God. That's child abuse, by the way. It is for sure. Let's keep it 100. That's, so let's, uh, that's definitely child abuse. Why does a parent abuse a child? If your family stays together but one of your parents is abusive, I don't know if it's better that you leave and get some help from a DV system, a domestic violence shelter, yeah. which ba back then they didn't really have those. Yeah, for sure. Absolutely. Or you stay and live it out. And you just, my mom said she wanted to keep our family together. Mm. She wanted to. That's usually the, the, the choice. Disproportionately, yeah. women have to make in so an abusive environment. There's like two types of trauma. There's post-traumatic stress disorder, and then there's complex post-traumatic stress disorder. The difference between the two, the major difference is complex trauma, post-traumatic stress disorder, let's define that. It is basically, I'll just give you an example. An earthquake happens, your house caves in, and your grandma dies. Mm -hmm. Oh, mm -hmm. that's horrible, right? Yeah, for sure. Car accident. You get traumatized by, let's say, a crooked neck or someone breaks their arm. And you d all you can remember is the scene of the cars hitting yeah. each other and the sound and the smell of the engines, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. exploding. Yeah, right? for sure. Front end collision. That could be a case of eventual post master disorder. About one third of people can develop it. Mm. It just depends on their background. Mm -hmm. And this is not repeated. It's just instances that happen. Right. Maybe... And I hate to bring this up. A woman gets raped. Yeah. And she's got to walk out her, her pain. Yeah, for sure. And all she can remember is a guy running at her while she's getting in the car. Yeah. And he's putting her his hand over her mouth, mm -hmm. you know, with chlorophyll or whatever he, or whatever he uses mm -hmm. to get her in the car and to rape her. Mm -hmm. Right? That can cause post-max stress disorder. Now, here's where the difference is. If you are repeatedly being abused verbally, mentally, physically, coercively at any given time for a long period, even a short prisoner of war. Mm -hmm. Good example. Oh, post-max stress disorder. Any war vendor can develop it. Right. For sure. But complex post-max stress disorders when someone is repetitively in a situation that they cannot escape from. So danger stranger is never leaving. It's there 24 seven. Mm. So if your parent is abusive and you can't run away, you get threatened with, if you do, I'm going to yeah. give you a, a, a spanking, butt woman. Yeah, I was going to say a swear word, but, you know. Yeah, you know. whatever. You, you, oh, you can here. They can just beep it out, right? Yeah, So absolutely. If, they, if you get an we, ass whooping. Yeah, we, we, that'll fly here. Yeah, that's, <laughs> I saw my mom get beat <laughs> mm -hmm. and slapped. My, my younger brother, my older brother, my sister never really got it, but she got yelled at a lot. Mm. And a lot of drilling of, you're worthless. I can't believe you. You're Polak. That's what you are. You Polak. Mm. You're stupid, just like your mother. Mm. You're not going to amount to anything. Look how slow you are. Come on, get the pace up. Come on. Oh, you didn't dust this right. This was my daddy. Wow. Now, out of the nine, let's say ten instances of treatment, one or two would be honeymoon. It would be like, oh, let's watch this show together. Come sit down. He'd be laughing. So my daddy was a real hardcore military style yeah. parent yeah my grandpa his daddy was in the air force yeah. my dad was in the air force yeah got kicked out for a little bit too much alcohol yeah 
and he was a plane mechanic. So those two don't go too well nah, together. Not at all. Yeah, you got to go. Don't want a mechanic. <laughs> nah. That's drunk. Actually, yeah. he wasn't drinking on the job. He would get wasted the night before, come to work hungover. Mm. And the supervisor, you know, obviously his colonel, whoever's in charge, yeah. caught on and got and he got discharged. Yeah. My dad could never get over that. Mm. My dad was very intelligent, very smart. Yeah. He was dyslexic. What I didn't know at the time, Timmy, as a little girl, I had no idea that my daddy had been abused by my grandfather. Mm. And then my grandfather, we don't know the whole background of his father. Yeah. But that would be my great grandfather. I do know at one point in my family's life on my daddy's side, they had money. Mm. And I think it was my great great grandfather that owned houses and businesses and he gambled it all away and drank it all away. So the family kind of went through this really hard period of readjusting to no money. Yep. And so my dad never, I, I don't think he ever forgot of the nice things he saw growing up that was being passed down to his dad. Mm. This kind of elite attitude a little bit like this, we're better than you. My family's all on my daddy's side, Yankees. Mm -hmm. Came in through the Mayflower, mm -hmm. stayed up in New York, wow. finally transitioned to Chicago, where my dad's family is to this day, the main family is. Okay. And then my mom's family's from Poland. She's a second generation. I'm third. Wow. They fled communism in 1899. Wow. I'm a mixed bag. I yeah, got yeah, yeah. Polish in me, and my daddy was German, French, obviously, Lobert. Yeah. Mostly Germ German and French, mm -hmm. Norwegian, English, and Irish. Interesting. I think I'm trying to think. Nope, I think that's it. Yeah. Yeah. That's all we are. 